So this video is going to be a mixture of things. It's going to be one part learning, one part mistakes and grieving, and then the other part, uh, I don't know. Fixing the pins on these Ryzen CPUs is something that's really hard to do, and it's something that you need to have a ton of patience and the right tools for. So I'm going to go over all of that in this video. But to explain how this happened, friend reached out to me. He's a good friend, longtime friend and we used to sell PC parts together. He essentially was taking the cooler off his CPU, which was in the motherboard, and a lot of times on these Ryzen coolers or Ryzen CPUs, the cooler will get stuck. If years goes by, the paste hardens and it will stick to the top. And when you pull it off, it can either fall off in the middle of that process or get stuck to the cooler and then you get a whole game of wiggling it off. One of the tricks, obviously, um, which he mentioned he did was the hair dryer method. Another trick is to run the PC for a while before removing the CPU. Um, I am not sure if he did that, but essentially he reached out and I'll throw up some of the messages on the screen. And he was like, hey man, I dropped and wrecked my CPU. Um, I don't have the money for a new one. So what I did is I gave him a loaner CPU, which I actually told him to end up keeping. It was just a, uh, I think it was like a 1500X, something really basic. So he's running that older slow CPU. And I told him I was gonna try and fix this. Now, I didn't even wanna make a video on this because I, I didn't have that much confidence in myself to be completely honest. And I have done a lot of, um, like SMT work on very easy surface mount stuff or through hole stuff over the years, but I've never done anything that's like quite this small. So I wanted to take a stab at it. I ordered some pins. They showed up from this weird, I don't know, is that German? It's uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's German. And yeah, so it showed up from this random place and it says pieces AM4 pins. And that's exactly how they packed and shipped it. So already my confidence was pretty low in this whole project. Also, a lot of the footage that you'll see in this video comes off a Tomloff microscope that was actually sent to me for a sponsor like months back. And I've been using it a lot. So um, there's no sponsor here. I just wanted to add it in as like, hey, this is a really good company. This thing rocks. So if you're into like board work or doing any of that stuff, check it out. Um, again, I am not North Ridge Repair. I'm not Northwest Repair. I'm just uh, showing you guys how I managed to do this. All right, everybody. So I'm going to pretty much narrate what's going on here because I could barely function. My brain was like destroyed after this. I did try the mechanical pencil thing. You definitely need one that has a metal tip because I just melted the tip of that. I ended up finding a pretty decent pair of um, tweezers and it took me a while. I went through like three or four different pairs. The Italian made tweezers are absolutely the best. This is what we used to use during like the SMT stuff that I did back in the day. And there's a reason why they buy them. As for pins, pretty much every corner had a bent pin all the way from the middle to the edge. They were all over the place. Um, you can see them here. They're very subtle. Like sometimes there'll be a little tiny bend, other times really bad. Um, there were a few that really killed me later on because they were completely flat and I was able to get them up but they fell off actually after I finished this video so I don't have a picture but one of the pins actually completely came off which um, made some future issues which we'll go over as the video progresses. Here was another mistake I made. I used regular solder um, instead of the lead solder to kind of like clean this up so I had to get some wick. I tried the flux pen to actually like bend the, the uh, pins back. That didn't work. And then here comes mounting the pins. This is probably one of the hardest parts because as short as these clips are, I'm trying to save some time here. Um, you really have to hold it down and wait. Like one pin can take upwards of five minutes. Um, essentially what you gotta do, you gotta heat up the pad previously with the soldering iron. So dab the soldering iron on the pad, then use the heat gun. I found that about 380 degrees Celsius was perfect at about 50% power, which mine, you know, yours will vary depending on what model you have. But um, about 380 degrees, I was able to basically heat up the pad just enough to put down the pin. And then I would hold the pin in place for anywhere from like 10 to 15 seconds and pull the heat away. And I would leave it on there after that too for a good 20 seconds about and uh, let it cool down and then release your uh, needle nose uh, tweezers. So that's pretty much how I went through this whole process. Um, it's not perfect. The flux was amazing. This was like the best discovery in my old job. I barely ever got to use flux and I forgot how good it works. So um, yeah, you can see from the side now that the pins are pretty straight. There is a little bit of solder on some of them, but it does not affect anything. So not a big deal.
So come on over to me. Can you see me? <laughs> All right. No, it's recording. You're good. Is the, is the microphone meter jumping? Can you see that? Yeah. All right. Cool. So this is the first time in history I've tried to fix one of these. <laughs> so this is a pretty big deal. If this turns on, um, I will never do this again. So do you have faith in me? Yes, no? Do you think it'll oh, turn on? Me? So this is, I fixed, I fixed almost, I, so there was probably about 20 bent pins and then there were six missing pins. So that's like unheard of amount. Of, most people would just junk this thing. All right, let me see where the power is. It might take a second and this is also a bad motherboard. One of the RAM slots does not work. But let's see if it posts. How's that gimbal, is that heavy? <laughs> All right, I'm going to pause it right here because I'm just going to tell you this is not going to post. Um, unfortunately, there was a tiny bridge. And when I said before where I had broken one of the pins off, one of the pins was so bent down that when I moved it back, it became so fragile that the solder that I was using actually got between the pins and connected them, causing a short. So, of course, it's not going to post. So, unfortunately, I had to take one of those pins out and during that process an entire pad got ripped off which means the whole thing is not good in that area whatsoever um, fortunately it's only for a voltage thing which we'll find out later is kind of terrible as well because it's actually connected to the DRAM but um, one of them is a SATA one and the other one has to do with DRAM I'll explain this in a minute but I just wanted to mention that really quick let's get back to the video my girl is recording say hello to G <laughs> All right, so this took way too long, probably cost me way too much, but um, I think I got it figured out. So I took out the CPU and I found that there was a little tiny bridge and I also updated the BIOS. So we're gonna try to see if it posts this time. Um, it's actually missing a pin, which is a little unusual because one of the pins fell off, but I think there are a bunch of pins that are not being used. Oh. Turn on. So that's it, by the way. I'm not using thermal paste. Um, I won't make you come over here. She's using a gimbal. Never used before. All right. That's a post. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this thing works. It was so bad, love. Like, you have no idea. There was like a hundred bent seep, like bent pins, and then like, I can't even talk right now. There was like a hundred bent pins, and look at that, yeah. It knows what it is. With all like 784C, it's really hot. Shows the RAM, 5800X, go ahead, walk over there. I'm like speechless right now, actually, to be honest. All right guys, so we're running Cinebench R23. I'm doing the 30 minute test. This is for stability. We're gonna do multi-core. And I want you to check this. I've already done a few runs um, before at 10 minutes, but I'm gonna leave it on. And the other thing is that I want the temperature to actually stay high. I wanna see it 90 C. That's why we're using this, yes, very crappy cooler. But the point of this is to make sure that those pins stay on the CPU. I had to use leaded solder, which in this country, um, typically we use a no clean or lead free solder. And this time to, to do all the rework to make it easy, I had to use lead solder. But I think it'll hold up. I just don't want to take any gambles. So running at high temps better than, you know, running it at low temps. All right, guys, we are heading over to my friend Jacob's house. He lives only five minutes up the street. So we're gonna head over there and give him the CPU. gigs right i'm running it ridiculous i don't even understand how it's possible like yeah. the stock was 1980 or something and yeah. i can use 2350. i wanted to definitely put more into it when i got it but then i'm like sure sure i got the xt but that's already running the xt stuff i mean past what the xt could do yeah which makes no sense 
It's just a good boost. Yeah, man. That's, did, the whole thing is kind of generic sorry, dude, there. Did that little screw work that I gave you? Uh, which one? I think I gave you, you were like... I think I found the one. Oh, you found yeah. it? I think, yeah. Yes. Nice. That, that whole thing's like a wreck. You need paste? Um, you got some? Yeah. Let's start. To run it stupidly in like both the channels sitting next to each other because the CPU, it might be, that might be where the volt. Let's just get into the bias. Yeah, that's all that matters. And uh, what's your the fan error BS anyway. So do you remember how I was just talking about how I broke one of those pins off? So essentially the pin that controls his SATA SSDs is actually one I could redo, I just ran out of pins and the pad is still there, but the pad got ripped off right next to it. That was the really damaged pin that I had bent back and when it snapped off, it took the pad with it. So unfortunately that particular pin controls both slots A1 and A2. So those are the two slots first in the row of four. So the only slots that are working are B2 and B1, which is not an ideal configuration. You would want them separated in both slots A2 and B2, but we gotta do what we gotta do. And this is pretty much, I don't know, it's the only way it works. So unfortunately he's not gonna get his proper memory speeds but um, the system seems to be working and it's a ton faster than the 1500X. And he'll save some money, you know, when he wants to buy another CPU and replace it down the line, he uh, he can do that because the motherboard is still good, it's just the CPU. You got some final words, sir? Uh, I'm, I'm pleased because I, I was throwing it away pretty much and Kyle here was able to resurrect it. So I appreciate him and not smart. Not ideal with the two sticks back to back, but... <laughs> Hey, this is tech for you. Yep. So right before I left the house, um, the thing blue screened. And I was like, what the heck? Like, it's been running Time Spy just fine. And it was right when he opened a game. I forget what game it was. It was some uh, shooter game. And so he opens it up and it blue screens. And he tried it a few times and it did that. We ended up doing DDU, uninstalling all the drivers. Um, we did the chipset drivers again. Uh, sometimes windows can be a little funky when you go between like a 5800X and a 1500X. There's completely two different architectures, two different core counts. Um, so I told him to send me some videos of it working later to make sure everything was all right. And so far he's been pretty happy and this is what he showed me. It's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> no overclock, obviously. No XMP. And yeah, I'm running at like... 60 frames on max which i'm happy about you you have succeeded my friend you have i bow before you i got the xmp on bro seems to be all set i don't know but it's a win it's a win i'm not gonna lie this video is a overly consuming amount of time um i put a lot of work into it i kind of gave up on it it also like made my other videos go a little off track so if you enjoyed it, drop a like, sub to the channel, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for more stuff like that. And also say hello to Papacito. <laughs>